So next up is Kevin Green um, from the couch. Uh, he's waving there. Um, so we, so we, I guess we met Kevin at, on the internet as most of the people we meet. Uh, but we also have Kevin on our like, sorry for the French, like the meet space meetup <laughs> in New York, uh, like a month or two uh, ago. And he showed us how he made Prima.co, um, the website uh, in Gatsby and Sanity. And that was pretty cool, we thought. So we wanted to have him here as well. So now I will promote him as host. It sounds kind of like science fiction-y. But, um, but yeah, let's try and see how this works. So now, Kevin, you are the host and you can share your screen. Right, I will just mute. Can you can you see it before you mute? Yeah, we can see it. You guys can hear me too? Yes. Sweet. Um hi, I'm Kevin. Um here's just a card of I guess some of my information. Uh I am on Twitter. I am on GitHub. I have a personal website, which I'm pretty proud of because I bought the dot sucks just so that no one can uh, try to blackmail me in the future. Uh, so I own it myself. And I occasionally write some stuff on Medium, uh, most recently some stuff about sanity, but you can find all that stuff later on your own. Um, I've been programming for about 15 years. I've been in agencies in New York for about eight. I've worked for Barrel, Sweden Unlimited, and Red Antler. And I am currently the <coughs> co-founder and only technical, so CTO, I guess, of The Couch. Uh, we've been doing that for a little over two years now. Um, yeah, and then what are we here to talk about? How we use Sanity to build the Prima site. Um, in the past, I've built sites on all sorts of TMSs, WordPress, Graph, Take Shape, Temple, Site Leaf, Prismic, Expression Engine, uh, doing things like Shopify, BigCommerce, Magento, all of that good stuff as well. And for this particular project, I, as usual, dove into another world, which is uh, Sanity. Uh, I have a habit of picking new platforms that I think can solve all of my problems, hopefully. And hopefully during the process of building that website, I don't run into any crazy headaches that I didn't foresee. Uh, luckily, the Sanity team is super active and awesome in Slack. So if you aren't in there, you should be. Uh, they've been invaluable helping me solve some of my problems along the way and definitely couldn't have launched this website without them. Uh, or at least in the timely fashion that I did build the website. So what's Sanity? If some of you don't know, it's a headless CMS. It runs locally, extendable backend, easy deployment, easy to customize, and modularity as a core component. And that's like how I built the site. And I'll be showing you that very shortly. And the problem I was trying to solve is that I hate building WordPress sites. Contentful is way too expensive. I've built my own CMSs and I just don't want to do that anymore. And WordPress ACF is an amazing tool and it's something that I almost always try to replicate to some capacity in the CMSs that I choose in bet. And Sanity seemed to solve for that in a numerable amount of ways. So. The stack is Gatsby, Netlify, Shopify by SDK for carts, and GraphQL for doing the account login registration. Yeah, that was a very loud noise, sorry. <laughs> and of course, Sanity. Uh, and what I aim to do is build very modular content. So articles and pages are extremely flexible. Uh, replicating ACF flexible content and using the portable text editor to make nested modularity. And of course, the serializer on the front end for that aspect. So 
without th further ado, let's take a look at first the website itself. So this is our homepage, which has a modular slideshow, a modular key value moment, this modular image to a, with an illustration, uh, the shoppable collection grid, and of course, this module, which was up above that we see again, some tagging, another module, which we saw up above, a editorial module that references an article, a quote module, and again, just like lots of components that can be moved around on the page. And then in the actual CMS, we can go into our pages, go into home, and we can see this main image for sharing. And then we have our hero slideshow. And then we have some like additional configurations for the layout style, the alignment, and finally this large module builder where we can select an array of items that have been defined in the CMS. So this, this gave the client the flexibility to build like all of these pages that you see here. And for like marketing purposes or A-B testing, like they can replicate as many page types as they want. Um, so if we dive in, you can see this top module here that has the, the image, the text, the illustration is just a object in Sanity. So we, we've like added all of, almost every field and content on the website is completely modular. And this is to prevent um, the need for me as a developer to go in and like create and build all these additional pages and giving them the like complete flexibility to build all types of, and a lovely pop-up as always, but all of the content that you see is something that the client can go in and edit themselves and give them like a very extendable, robust system. So if we take a look also now at the code, um, I'll actually make this a little bigger so you guys can see. So this is our page component. This site is built with Gatsby and React, and you can see the standard helmet, our hero slideshow module, because it's a little bit more custom. And then we have this render modules, which is where essentially all of the content on the website is rendered for pages, which just does a loop through all of our modules. And then over here, we have that actual module file where we define all of those same modules that are in the CMS and render them on the page with their content. So let's go. So next I wanna show you guys the editorial content which is a little bit different because we're not using the like modules, so to speak, we're using the rich text editor, which if you're all familiar with is a markdown CMS editor. And then if I need to move this thing actually, we additionally have modular content that we can inline into the CMS as well. And this gave the client the ability to like post some of those um, to like diversify their content essentially. So if we go into one that I know has one. So we have a, a hero module. This is actually a inline module to allow for like an introduction. And then we have just like the traditional standard content coming from the WYSIWYG. Um, and to show you what that looks like. So for anyone that's used the rich text editor, you know you have to define your content types or in the serializer so that you can render them. So we have things like footnote, lead paragraph. We have the Shopify URL embed for extending the CMS. Uh, we have a recipe card, which I can actually show you. It's pretty cool. but I can't find anything. Um, there we go. 
So this is a particular content type that allows us to set ingredients, directions, or cook time, and it gives you the ability to also print it out. And we can take a look at that in the CMS. So we have this inline recipe card that has all of this information in it. So we have the directions, the cook time, the quantity, and of course the ingredients. So they could actually add a recipe card to any article on the website. It doesn't have to be like specifically a recipe content type. And that was again, to give them as much flexibility as possible in their CMS and editing experience. Um, now let's do, so, sorry. How am I on time? All right, cool. So going into Sanity itself, um, that module, modular content that we were looking at on that page is all just defined here as a module content object. And I just have all of these individual product types that, or not product types, module types that are inlineable into the CMS. And this, this like, the idea of this type of system has been like very invaluable. Um, adding module types is awesome. Uh, that's like one of my, in one of the previous slides, I said Contemple is expensive. This site has, I think, 92 different content types at this point. Uh, and for anyone that knows about Contemple's pricing, that would cost at minimal $1,000 a month for my client. And that is not an option for, I think, anyone. Uh, and the only, the only way we could potentially do it without all of these module content types is by building really, really big singleton page types. And that would just be in my eyes, a bad experience. So we, we use sanity to the fullest, I think, in terms of the amount of content types that we have defined and the way that we build these modular pages, um, with this, oh, nope, hold on. With this tool here, um, which is like made the client infinitely happy. Um, I think they've experienced lots of CMSs in their life and have like crowned this like their favorite editing experience. So kudos to the Sanity team on making this like super awesome and enjoyable. And I did occasionally uh, break some things that they have gone in and fixed for me along the way, which is like super awesome. Uh, and now I want to show you guys real quickly the e-commerce aspects, uh, because that's also pretty cool. Um, these little widgets are covering my screen. So we have <coughs> introduced a shoppable component to this website and it is powered by Shopify. Uh, sorry if there's any snip cart people in the, uh, sharing, but, Shopify was the solution that we went for because it was something the client understood and I wanted to build them a headless solution and using the buy SDK is how we achieve that. But we also wanted to extend our products into the CMS. So we have a parody of all of our Shopify content into Sanity. And then we have this modular content builder again for creating all these custom modules but you'll also see some of the more traditional pricing, SKU, inventory, uh, some tagging. And this data is actually coming directly from Shopify. And just to show you that functionality, let's go like this. And I'm actually going to update this. So you can see that it was published less than a minute ago because I just actually saved it in Shopify. And we have a webhook service that is running on the like Netlify Prima serverless functions. And here you can see we just accept data, run a parse through it, and then we're running a transaction that inserts it into Sanity. And this is like, all there is to it really um, that's like the extent of the integration and has allowed us to 
extend our products with all of these additional modules. So the pricing and the name is about all the information that's coming from Shopify and then everything else on the page is a module, a module. This is a like very large, robust, extendable module where I actually encountered a break in Sanity and the Sanity team was awesome enough to resolve it uh, before the launch even happened, which is awesome. So we have just to show you the nested modularity here, um, which I'm sure no one ever anticipated someone doing nine nested levels deep, but we did. So we have this, so this fine print module has a slideshow, these accordions, and then inside of this key ingredient, we have an inline module that references another module on the website. So if we go in here, product fine print, go into the accordion, go into the key items, go into the inline editor. And then finally, we have this inline ingredient that references another level outside of this editor. And these tools are in the way. Um, so if we actually go into ingredients, you can see all of these ingredients defined here, which is what it's referencing. And then over here, we have this like inline link that takes you to that ingredient in the CMS or on the front end of the website. And this was to allow them to like not have to list out all of this content and instead just link to it. And of course, show this little snippet, um, which would not be possible if this was just a traditional Shopify site. Uh, for anyone that has worked in Shopify knows that the meta field editors are not all that great. And this has allowed for infinite amounts more flexibility. And then again, here we have another module and another module and another module. And then we have a related products module and then related stories module. So the, the idea here is again, just modularity, modularity, modularity. Um, and let's see. So yeah, the e-commerce aspect was Shanity, Shopify to Sanity webhook. We have a Gatsby app that's running for handling accounts. We've extended all of our content in Sanity. Uh, we have an inventory sync, but we also additionally, when you land on a shopping page, we do a Shopify hit because we want the inventory to always be in sync. So while we are also passing it to Sanity, there is a that three to four minute build process for Gatsby. So we wanna always ensure that if a product is in stock or not in stock, we don't let people buy it. Um, and then very lastly, we do have a convention, which if you've read any of my stuff on Medium, know that content preview is hard. So we've added this uh, environment mechanism. So right now this is in the production branch and it's the homepage. So we probably don't want to set it to staging because then the website would break. Uh, there, there's definitely some need for like error bulletproofing this, but it's done the job that we need so far. Uh, we have this environment mark staging, which is actually a separate Netlify branch um, that is always, well, we keep as up to date as possible, but setting it to staging will deploy this page to the staging environment. And that allows the client to see what the website looks like without a Gatsby live preview account. Um, and this is also because lastly, we have a very custom data flow. Um, we don't, or I actually don't use the Sanity, um, Sanity source plugin. I wrote my own. Um, and that's because we have very specific needs and I'm not really a big fan of GraphQL. So I wanted to just data dump it all myself. Um, so you can see here this query that actually does the environment mechanism for production to staging. But we have here our crazy long array of all the modules and references and nested references that are building all these sections of the website. Um, yeah, we have a, a search query here that only builds that. Uh, but yeah. Um, this is a file that uh, the Sanity team actually uh, 
sort of closed their eyes at when I showed them in New York. So I just thought you'd all also enjoy it. Um, and yeah, I guess the very last bit is just pain points. Content preview is still really hard. So we have that staging mechanism, which is like kind of like soft solve. I don't think it's like the best solve, but it only takes a few minutes to build the site. So having them not pay for Gatsby preview is also a benefit just because it's expensive. Um, educating clients about how their CMS works, how things like live preview don't work out of the box, obviously is another big pain point. And giving a client this much modularity means they can build pages however they want. And sometimes those pages don't always look great, but we hope that most of the content is usually better than worse. Um, yeah, I, that's, uh, that's it for my talking. It's, so if we want to take it back over to Newt. Right. Thank take it back over to Newt. Right. Thanks so much for showing us, that, Kevin. It's uh, it's a really awesome project. Um, I'm I'm like I'm a bit stunned actually, <laughs> and I've seen this before. Um, and for the Grok query, uh, it would be quite larger if we have used GraphQL, anyways. <laughs> yeah. So no, but if it works, that's that's awesome. So um, yeah, so Zoom has this uh, raise hand function. So I, I think we can take one or two questions if someone wants to 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 raise their hand. <laughs> I think I, I think almost everyone actually can just like unmute and, and ask the question. Let's see how that goes. It can be a bit uh, scary perhaps in, in a large crowd. Well, it does look like there's questions in the chat also. Yeah, we can also answer them. Yeah, can you talk a bit more about the pain points you encountered with using the default Gatsby source sanity data transformer and the GraphQL? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so the main pain point there was really, I wasn't able to use the sanity GraphQL uh, deployment. So I couldn't actually use the sanity source plugin. And that's, I think in part because of some of the nested modularity um, I know that you guys have rebuilt that tool, uh, but given the like timeline and where I was in the build process, I decided to roll my own and it, it prevented a lot of breaking. I think in the future, uh, some of my Gatsby sites in the past with Contentful and GraphQL have all broken anytime someone updates any type of page type that doesn't have nested, um, checks because GraphQL is um, not my friend. Yeah, I, I might add that we solved that problem actually in our source plugin, but uh, I think it's it's the completely legit way to use Gatsby. You don't have to use the data layer that they, they have. So yeah, uh, another question. Um, can you talk about how you work with the designer to map out all the different modules? Um, and do you have uh, a way that you document the modules for editors to review before they build a new pages? Um, yeah, actually, if you want to give me share access, I can actually show yeah. you that. Uh, let's make you host again. So I actually in our sketch files um, had the designer go in and like essentially map out all of the different module types. So we have our hero module, our lead paragraph, this module with illustrations, which is like repeated throughout the site and kind of like do a high level design audit of all of the potential modules. And what, what I actually have liked to do in the past is honestly print designs out as archaic as that sounds and 
lay them all out on a table and sort of like mark up like what module is similar. And that way I can like proactively build out larger sections of the website by just building like one module that has a little bit of flexibility uh, to account for like different scenarios and situations. So uh, this site, I think as because of the amount of content types has something like 30 or 40 modular content types between the brand pages, the editorial pages, and of course the inline articles. Um, but yeah, it was, I, I think it's also like a super helpful process uh, even for the designers to just like see how many different types of modules they have and potentially like consolidate um, some things to be a little bit more scalable, so. Cool. Uh, did you did you also have like um, uh, have the editors also review um, like the modules before they are implemented? Um, they, I mean, like they obviously the the Prima team is a part of the design process, so we built and design all these modules based on like their request and their feedback and what they think they uh, would need with their actual content. We've since launching created a couple of new modules that like didn't really exist originally because we didn't have all the content ready. So we had to make like a new credits module, for example, for setting up link references and things like that. Cool. So I see that there are a couple more questions in the chat. We can try to answer them like in the chat, I think, uh, okay. because I think we have to move on. Uh, but Again, thanks so much for showing us the, the stuff. And we will keep track of what happens to Prima in the future. 